it's on the hey guys hi welcome to Dwayne's been stop this episode we have Nicholas Lim um, a lot of you might be wondering he's not a theater celebrity but you know we also talk to other people outside of that but Nicholas does have theater background uh, I'm sure this might be a surprise to some uh, yep. some of his followers uh, whom he's about to tweet to um, about this link uh, I think I put on your page uh, GV, which is by the way, okay. uh, GLBT Voices, Voices Singapore, uh, about this interview. So there's a link there, um, okay. but there's also a link on my Facebook page. I don't know how to tell you that, but I, and I tagged you. So if you actually, um, it's okay because oh, I've, it's a tweet. So you yep. you can just say search for Dwayne Spinstock on Facebook, and that first. Um, the first entry there should be should have a link. So, by the way, if you you guys are watching it uh, on Facebook, if you want to chat with Nicholas and myself, you have to click into the YouTube website so that you can chat with us. Cool. Yeah. And the chat's over here, Nick, if you want to see anything cool. that comes up. Right. Um, number of viewers at the moment, none. All right. But usually okay. our viewers come in through the week. Sure. Uh, and I'm realizing that live streaming is not actually that effective because people want things on demand. Unless you're... Right you're putting out some really controversial like sure. first time stuff then right. you know but anyway so um, just to introduce you to our uh, audience uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do with uh, GVS well okay um, it started about almost three years ago it's about um, two months to our third anniversary actually wow um, only three years ago I feel like it's, yep. been, it's been around longer for some reason but well, that's because yep. I'm, I've known you longer I don't know yeah. um, Okay, so it actually started off as a confessions page. Um, almost three years ago, there was this whole craze about like confessions um, like pages. It started in the uh, US, um, where the various universities would have their own dedicated confessions page, right? So mm -hmm. it, it's basically kind of a, like a rant or a complaint page that's dedicated to that particular student body. Okay. Uh, and then it caught on here. And, and that was not, it, not specifically uh, gay related? No, in fact, um, I think we were probably one of the first around the world when we started. Wow, okay. Yeah, but what gave me the idea was because, um, well, uh, there was actually a news report that came out, and then uh, this was around early February where I was having a discussion with friends, and somehow the topic came around to confessions pages. We were talking about stuff that was going viral online, and right. uh, one of the very popular ones was actually the one by NUS, and there was another one by SAF, right? Okay, and then there was one about the PAP. But wow, of course, okay, you wait. Know, yeah. Right, those things, okay, maybe you can confess a lot of stuff with right. the anonymous sort of thing. Yep. But NUS and uh, what was the other one? Uh, SEF. Yep. Okay, SEF perhaps too, but NUS, were people confessing about things that uh, they couldn't confess about openly? Um, a lot of it from what I read, uh, okay, there was the usual I have a crush on you kind of stuff. Oh, okay, it was very okay. boy girl relationship stuff. And right, so um, this applies very yep, much to. Yep. And, and then there was page. stuff whereby they complained about lecturers, they complained about things like, <laughs> I think there was one that I read, uh, like the shuttle buses were not arriving on time. You know, it's, it's all about very daily uh, gripes that you have, right? Right. Uh, so, so I took that idea and I was kind of wondering at the back of my mind, how can I apply it to a community that's across the country? but still niche enough that you can bring people together. Because all these were very institutions-based. Right. Um, well, then the gay community came to mind. So, ah. so when I first started it, and um, also on a totally irrelevant note, right. uh, Gossip Girl ended its run two months before <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah. So I was a huge fan of, of that Gossip Girl. The kind of content that I was figuring that I would get would actually be very close to Gossip Girl. So I'm not sure if you watched the show, right? But Gossip not Girl... Not yet. Um, okay, it's... it's I uh, planned to, I planned to. Well, it's basically kind of similar whereby you submit anonymous tips but Gossip Girl is all about rich kids in New York okay. particularly uh, particularly in Manhattan okay. who sleeps with who who breaks up with who the latest fashion and stuff like that right. I was kind of expecting that same kind of content within a gay community who sleeps with who who, who broke up with who who stole <laughs> okay, whose boyfriend yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. Nick I know because the Nick I know is just like a little bit more of a rebel a bit yeah. more, more more edgy yeah. but you know so I was just like huh how come you know yeah. but what I hear of what the page has become now and it's mm. it's different right it's very different uh, people actually within the first week itself I received over 500 entries wow and it, and, and it totally flawed me um, a lot of the stories um, the first three months was very emotionally overwrought for me because people were using it to come out uh, people were using it to talk about how they feel uh, disconnected with their families uh, people who talked about how their families have found out right. about them being gay or lesbian and they were thrown out of their homes and everything it was wow. very very emotionally um, yeah it was just 
overwrought. So this must what what how did you feel? I mean that this must be so unexpected for you because you were expecting your your feed yep. of gossip girl sort of yep. right because yep. the seasons run out. Yep. And you're um, like reading all this and you're going this is not the well, so like yep. how how has that how did that affect you and then um, you know Okay, firstly, it was a huge wake-up call. Um, right. Well, I've been out since I was 12. Right. Um, and my mum knows, and my reader knows. Um, a lot of them, they have asked me, and I've shared my, my own story oh, online. This was before you came... This was before you even revealed who you were to your readers, though, right? Oh, uh, yeah. This was... I yeah. mean, after, I mean. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, I, so... I only revealed who I was to my readers about 18 months into the page. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, at first, when thing. you... Okay, so let's go back to at first when you read all these yeah. posts that you didn't expect... Did you think like, oh, this is not what I expected. I want to shut down the page. Or nah, like, no, what no. What did you feel? Um, okay. <laughs> On the flip side to me, okay, like, I have been out for quite a while. Right. Um, but I realized that for a lot of the gay community, you know, what we see is kind of like the tip of an iceberg. Okay. Okay, you know, with, with the gay bars and the gay scenes and even the gay bath houses and all. Right. Um, and even with Pink Dot, right? Right. So the general perception people had of the gay community was we are kind of pretty okay. Right. right? And because that's what's out there. That's what people yeah, see. Correct. They yeah. don't see... W- and everything seems very okay. There's there's no obvious cases of gay bashing. Uh, homophobia isn't really expressed um, visibly in Singapore. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but when I started reading all these stories and I realised that, hey, I, I may have been a bit of like ahead of the bell curve. Right. There, and it reminded me a lot of my friends and even my own partner. Right. We've been attached for five and a half years. Right. Just passed last week. Um, for a lot of them, including like my own partner, they are pretty much in the closet. Okay. Right. And and we kind of have this like running gag whereby we say that some uh, sometimes a person is so deep in the closet that you can see like Narnia. <laughs> so uh, and and that basically describes I mean I don't mean to sound like flippant but that describes a lot of my readers a lot of them are very very much deep in the closet because wow. of the fear of rejection the stigmatization the discrimination that they fear that they may face right it's actually very very scary right. um, and these are how many you were saying how many what how many readers do you have right now at, at um, I've got over 45,000 fans um, mostly uh, it's spread now but mostly yeah. it was Singapore right so it that started many, with Singapore that, that, that many yeah. um, closeted yeah. uh, gay Singaporeans um, actually on a You're weekly talking about basis men right um, mostly okay, okay it's right hard, now right? the readership is about 79% male okay. so I guess there's about 21% female right um, on a weekly basis I have about over 300,000 readers that visit the page okay yeah. and um, and again on the more like personal side I, I do advertising uh, in in my professional life, right. right. So I help a lot of brands with their own uh, Facebook pages. Okay. And uh, the one thing which I see for a lot of these uh, like typical brand pages is, the the terms of engagement with the fans is right. usually via the post feed, right? Because right. as a fan, you may like the page once and that's it. You you rarely visit the page ever again. Right. Whatever content you you interact is usually through your news feed. Yes, but that with, gets lost. The more you yeah. the more you subscribe to, the yeah. more it gets lost. Yeah. So, but okay. with this is very interesting voices, though. This is because yeah. you have the advertising background right. as well. So this is all very very interesting. Yeah. But with GLBT voices, it's the total opposite. Okay. The the post interaction is actually very very low, but right. the page views that I have are actually very high, because. And that kind of made me realize the kind of uh, readers I had that so many of them were were so afraid to interact with the page because if you just click like the page, your family members may see it, your classmates may see it, right. your your campmates or your colleagues may may actually see it. So they don't interact with the page at all. But there are a lot of silent readers that I have. Right, yeah. and you can see it from the analytics. I can see it from the analytics, right? Right. So uh, right now I about sixty percent of my readership is about Singaporean. Um, second strongest following is actually from Malaysia. Right, um, it's starting to it's starting to spread a little bit. Um. Yeah. Okay. Malaysia actually came about very very early, and then oh. for some strange reason, uh, the third highest readership I have is from Cambodia. Wow. Yeah. Which is okay. kind of personal is- for me because, um, from twenty o eight to twenty ten, I actually worked in Cambodia, right for 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 almost two years. Oh wow. Yeah. So so that 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 little. I mean, there was no actual marketing that I did to Cambodia itself. Um, I was actually kind of surprised because the page is predominantly English, right? But okay. it's a very very strong readership from from Cambodia, and then uh, it's, wow. it's 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 kind of spread now. Uh, we've got readers and we've got content that comes in from US, UK, Afghanistan for some strange reason, right? Uh, Iraq, so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have so many questions for you. Okay. So when all that started to come in, now it, it I'm sure it's growing and it's it's different each time along the way because. Right. When, when your gossip stuff didn't quite turn out like mm. it was, yeah. 
and then you realize there's this whole other community right. and then so your response was to to help them more um, uh, okay and, and then as you help them and as the community grew to right. different countries then right. as as an administrator like do you have to evolve how you support right. the community as a platform okay um as the administrator, I, I quickly adopted this rule. I do not comment on the post as much as possible. In fact, my, my, my comment rate is probably like 0.01%. Okay. Um, I let the community do that themselves. Right. right. That's the first line that I drew. Um, right. I did look at a lot of other confession pages that was being run by the right. schools, by, by like the one there for SAF. Um, the administrators do take an active role of commenting. Right. right? Why but did you choose me, not to? I don't see myself as a counsellor. And that's right. because of the kind of content that was coming in, right? A lot of it was very heartfelt, emotional, um, some were depressive, some were suicidal and stuff right. like that. And it quickly became clear to me that I was not equipped to offer professional advice. Right. And right? So, so it's just a place to confess. And is there is there now, is there anyone that, are there other readers okay. that, that, that advise? Yes. And yes. do you moderate that because if it's no. the wrong advice no. or what? Um, okay. I do moderate in terms of no cyberbullying. You know, okay, that's um, good. That there was a period of time whereby there was a trend uh, in terms of suicidal posts. Okay. And the thing about uh, suicidal posts is I post one up and that starts kind of like a copycat effect right. because I guess other depressed readers would yeah, see... Yeah, they're and, like, oh, and, yeah, these are people and, speaking and, up. And, and, and they would see the amount of attention. And I wouldn't say that they're attention-seeking, but a lot of these posts that come in are actually a silent cry for help. Right. Right. And... The, the whole tone of the put, uh, the whole tone of the page, can spiral downwards very very quickly. Right. Uh, so these days, when I get such posts, if they do come in with a contact, I would refer that person to uh, one of the professional counseling services. So like Ugo Chaga, or there's the twenty one hour, um, the twenty four hours one, which is the Samaritans of Singapore, and so okay, on. Okay, so that's good. So I would ref- I would like refer them to that. Right. Um. In terms of. Okay, and, and the one thing which I love about the page now is how the community has kind of adopted it as its own. Right. When you see the kind of comments that come in, I would say 95% of them are actually largely positive. You know, right. they, they, are, they are very encouraging and stuff like that. Uh, I have stepped in from time to time to nip like the cyber police or like the trolls. Right. Um, if, if you want to troll a post that is a little bit more lighthearted and stuff like that, that's still yeah, okay that, yeah, but when somebody is obviously <laughs> in need of help yeah. and you go in and you troll just for the sake of it yeah. um, I've, I've actually have gently told some of my f- close friends off and I said hey don't do that right because yeah. to you it may seem like very flippant but when I get behind the psyche of somebody and I have met a lot of these readers right. uh, some of them who write in personally to me they have sent in a post and then they see the amount of reaction that they've gotten the support and encouragement and right. everything and then they write in to thank me after that right. and, and, and I realised that while for me while I just create a space and while for somebody who comments and just types in a comment that they may forget like two days later right. that single comment actually lives and, and, and carries on with the person who has sent in the original confession Wow! and it has impacted them a lot okay. two years later or now coming three years later I have had people coming up to me in the street asking me uh, are you GC? That's that's my nick. Um, right, because gay confessions. Yeah, that means right. right. So so they come up to me and ask me. So are you GC or are you Nick? And I said yes, I am. And I and they actually shake my hand and say thank you very much for what you're doing. Right. I've actually sent in a post before and it totally helped me get through what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. in fact, it's helped one of my friends, which I will. Um, there's a post that he right. sent to me. I can't tell okay. you who he is. Sure. Uh, you may not even know, but sure. um, that he would he would he you have helped. This page has helped him a lot, and cool. uh, he wants hopefully for you to read uh, that. Okay. And we also get into, um, you say you've met your fans and things like mm. that. Uh, we also get into a little bit more of uh, some of the activities that you now organize right. later on. Uh, but but first, so many things, right? Uh, but first, I still want to ask, so so now with like other people coming in, like Cambodia right. or the States or Malaysia, right. then so you would then ha- have to make a, uh, you're responding and where they can tend to for help in terms of that where where oh, okay. so you then have to look and do your research right or yes something? I do um, like for Malaysia and recently okay so as part of some of the stuff that, that I've organised for readers so right. I actually journeyed up to KL a couple of weeks ago to mm-hmm. meet some of the readers there and some of the readers then connected me to one of their own um, what do you call it uh, community support groups right right uh, like PT foundation and the pink triangle right. actually in, in in terms of um, these community organizations Malaysia is quite put together You'd Wow be quite surprised yeah wow really awesome people um, and 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 when I met the fans there when I met the readers there they were really really very awesome people that's awesome yeah okay so Good. we'll talk more generally about- um, 
So when these content come in from these other countries, right, mm-hmm. and these people need help and stuff, you'd be surprised at the variety of readers who then step in and comment and say that this is where you can go to help. Right. Yeah. So now, I wouldn't say it's self po- uh, self policing, but but the community really steps up. Really, right. really, really. really. That's yeah. good. So yeah. I mean, it takes care of itself in some in some ways. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, but the thing is, it's still anonymous. I mean, mm. if they're not meeting a person, then yeah. when they're talking to each other, it's still anonymous, right? Um, well, if you comment on the page, then your profile is... Oh, that's right. Yeah. So how... But a lot of readers actually create a secondary profile. Ah, yeah. interesting. So, so, and you can see from the names, because the names are obviously fake, right? Right, right. Um, and they actually use these um, anonymous profiles to help other readers, which I find it's something kind of amazing. Like, somebody yeah. can actually... Because... It's not easy to create a secondary profile on Facebook. I've tried, and then <laughs> it got deleted. Yeah, right. Because uh, when I first started the page, I figured I needed an anonymous profile to help manage the page, right? Right, and but then, you have to put a, 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 a something that looks like a proper name also, yeah. right? That would and help. And phone number. And, and so if you use the same phone number again, then you can't yeah. have another profile. Yeah. And, so uh, have, okay. and yeah, that's effort I mean, then. I mean, Facebook has a lot of ways to catch out fake profiles, lah. Right? right. So. And uh, yet they sell, they sell, um, if you promote yeah. your page, uh, yeah. they, they sell, they, but these profiles that, to me, these profiles that subscribe yeah. to your page, if you pay for them, are not real? I don't know. Uh, Maybe, okay, that's another whole topic, yeah. but, but, but yeah. Um, what do you think though, just really quickly, do you think these are um, real profiles? Like when you, ad- when you advertise your page and right. people sign up? Um, no. No, no, right? No. So they they kind of monopolized it, right? I'm sorry, and Facebook, but yeah. not, worth the money. <laughs> not worth the money. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, there, there are ways to try and get as many authentic followers as possible, right? You right. have to be very, very uh, stringent on your targeting criteria. Yes. Okay. You and want that anyway because yeah. you don't have the interaction. What's the point? Yeah. You have like 10,000 subscribers, right. but the number of people that like or interact with your video or your post yeah. is like... 10 or yeah. you know so then you can tell you can tell uh, Facebook has also cut down in terms of the organic reach for your post which I'll go into I've, I've actually ranted about that personally myself right. uh, made me very angry but uh, okay and that's affected your it has affected okay. your page um, okay just just briefly getting into the whole media yep. uh, like behind the scenes of it when, when I first started the page right um, a post has got about 5% organic reach in terms of your total fan base okay? okay so let's say you have 10,000 fans right? okay um, when, when when you put up a post uh, I am discounting those that will go viral for various reasons okay right. but just a normal post right. usually the lifespan of a post will reach about up to 5% some pages even up to 7 or 8% okay of what of your total fan base oh I see right so if let's say you've got right. 10,000 5% will be like 500 is it 500 Five, uh, yeah about 500 okay, 500 yeah. to about 700 ish right okay. sometimes it goes up to about 1,000 to uh, now Facebook has uh, and they have got this algorithm it's called uh, age rank okay. and they've minimized that percentage to 0.05% why though? because they want you to pay for it oh right so so now oh. now if you see in terms of your Facebook page right it's very prominently boost your post boost your post boost your post yeah right they've cut down in terms of your organic reach your so your organic reach is how when your post appears on somebody's uh, somebody's news feed so if like these page. things don't appear on their news feed what does then? Um, paid stuff paid oh content oh my gosh that's okay. horrible um, Facebook does say that they prioritise posts from your own friends okay. rather than pages right okay. so pages are classified as pages with commercial interest and everything yeah. now the thing that and, and I've actually spoken to Facebook about this um, before um, it's wrong to classify pages that are for like non-profit or for community organisations like mine right. versus those that are with brands that has got deep pockets like Coke and McDonald's and everything. Right, right. Everybody is all lumped into the same thing. Oh, right? that's not right. So, yeah, but well. Because yeah, one's community, one is marketing and yep. selling, and so yep. that's different profit. And well, but Facebook has to earn money, so. Right. Well, you know, like may the may the best social media platform win. I'm, you yeah. know, I'm sure if 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 it doesn't work out for the community, the community, as part of the community, you have the power to choose what you want to support. That is true. Yeah, so yeah. we should be very aware of what we support yeah. in general. Let's do that. Uh, okay, the other thing was about being anonymous. Let's see now, where was I? I was thinking about... Um, um, oh, just, just on the topic of suicide. Um, I think I feel like when, when people are in that stage, if they really want to do something, they they don't they don't really speak out. They right. You won't hear it from them. It, they just kind of like, from my experience, just 
you know they just they just do it but on yep. your page they're anonymous so if it's a cry for help i feel like it's probably mm. genuine right it's not a call for um, attention because they're anonymous how can they be calling for attention that way if okay um i would say about 70 to 80 percent of the posts that we that i get right that deals with depression and even feeling like suicidal which is kind of extreme right are genuine um a lot of them right. don't have anybody to turn to okay. and 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 i've spoken to so many of these readers uh one thing that strikes me is a lot of them feel very alone okay right um a lot of them firstly have very f- small social circles right um their 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 immediate social circle would be family um schoolmates church friends pretty much that's it right wow. and and a lot of them um okay firstly the biggest demographic amongst my readers are from 18 to 24 okay right? so so wow. so you and the second largest after that is um 14 to 18 that, that 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 kind of range i've got a very very young readership right, right? so when so you look at these um like demographics a lot of them are probably just uh finished ns right. um, probably just starting to go into uni a lot of them have not had their first job yet so in right. terms of expanding their social circle it's pretty much contained to what they have in their lives through school right. church camp stuff like that yeah that makes sense um, because i mean if they're, if they're, they're just coming out of yeah. you know uh, education and stuff like that yeah. they're still finding themselves correct they don't know where to turn to they, yeah. their community their social circle is yeah. not huge and uh, but then I'm, I'm sure there are older folks that are also they are they quite are. you know like they've been quite silent so actually for for a lot of the older readers um the kind of social issues that they they feel that the youngsters are going through to them sometimes they feel that it's kind of trivial Right. Right. But I try to place myself in the shoes of a younger reader right. and, and realize that my social circle is actually very, very constrained. Right. And the fear of voicing out okay, to even your best friend who you may have known from primary school and stuff like that and say, that, hey, I may be gay, right. it's hugely daunting. It's like, how do I even of broach course. something like that? Yeah. Right? With, with the knowledge that, firstly, your close friends would know your family. Yes. Right? Because Singapore is very small. It's, it is. It's, it is. This country especially. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, well, the page has, has, I guess, now has this function whereby you can kind of try and put out feelers as to how do I come out, how do I even broach the subject, who can I come out to, right. uh, should I come out to my teacher, you know, so we get a lot of these kind of questions. Right. And again, what amazes me is the readers, a lot of them are very um, tireless with the same kind of support, the same kind of encouragement, the wow. same kind of, you know, you can do this, don't do this you need to consider the consequences and, and, and stuff like that. I've actually learned a lot from the readers themselves right. um, who, who post very, very good comments and very good advice. Wow. Uh, some of it I've actually cut and pasted to a corner. So sometimes when readers message me personally, I can then transfer that same advice back to them again. Okay. Um, yeah, but so now the page has, has, has performed this function and being anonymous and I guard their identity zealously. Uh, I've I've got a friend who helps me moderate in terms of spam and stuff. That's like that good. I was comments. gonna get into that yeah. next. Like how? But do you... I'm the only one who has access to all the content that is submitted. Right. Right. So um so even some of the 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 readers who send in directly to the page, my friend would then tell them please send it directly to the anonymous form. Right. Uh, which is run through Google. Google. Uh, yeah. So yeah. so so is this Google doc. So um so there have been cases in terms of for suicidal post. Um, Okay, well, there was one that, 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 that kind of scared me the most and um, right. still depresses me to, um, today uh, where, the, where the boy actually took the step. He sent in the confession and then he took the step off. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, and, and how I found out about that was because the guy that he was seeing, um, well, the boy that he was dating, right. actually found his laptop. And when he opened up... Um, he saw that. He, yeah. That's the last thing that he did on the... Which was... Yeah. Very right. depressing. Oh, wow! That's really, really yeah. yeah that's depressing. And but, but in terms of um time management, how do you you know aside from having your friend help right. you? So these posts come in and it's growing bigger and yep. more and more and more each day. So how do you do you set aside time every single day? How how do you work that out? Okay, firstly, and do you uh, read and how much of it do you post? A lot of it is not possible. I would say about five years ago, um, because now everything that I do is purely mobile. Uh, in terms right. of accessing the the entries that readers send in to managing a page, you know, we we have apps for like everything now, right? right. So I manage. I would say about ninety five percent of my time is done through the phone or else through my right. iPad. Wow. Um, so I can do it on the go. Okay. Um, 
I mean, one thing that you see in Singapore, a lot of us are going around with our faces in it, like, like in our phones. I would say that mine's slightly more productive, lah, because I'm yeah. just the page. That's that's okay. That's so about it. In a day, how much time do you spend doing that? I don't know. Um, I would say I'll spend about 10, 15 minutes every hour. Wow. Okay. Yeah, then wow. at night, I would s- dedicate about one hour, one and a half hours, just updating the page, going through the activity logs. Um, making sure that I don't miss out stuff, replying to messages and stuff like that. So you read every single entry? Uh, every single entry, every single comment, as much as possible. Wow. Yeah. But how? what percentage of it per day goes out in general? What What gets posted? Or does everything that's uh, sending get post, gets uh, posted? No, no, no. Okay, so obvious spam doesn't get posted. Um, okay. We do receive a fair bit of hate speech, probably about one or two entries now. Haters when, will hate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, the post for, uh, when the page first started, uh, we used to get about one, one to two hate speech a day but now it's kind of withered down because I think they realise that I don't post it right um, so spam doesn't get posted uh, hate speech doesn't get posted um, anything that's that's uh, defamatory libelous you know um, there are angry stuff that somebody wants to name and shame somebody I don't right. post that as well okay. uh, because I, I I respect everybody's right to to privacy right right um, which is kind of controversial and, and I've gotten into commentary tussles with readers on that because some readers oh, wow. go like you know this fellow's a cheater and stuff like that and he needs to be named and shame and I said no that's not the function yeah exactly um, what other stuff um, basically oh okay anything that is solicitous you know right. I am 25 young hot bottom looking for no sorry yeah, I don't post that go yeah. on Grindr <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so I usually refer them to Grindr for that okay um, but pretty much everything else gets posted of controversial stuff drug use right have brands started to come in, and how do you yes. uh, how do you deal with that? Uh, okay, the the one rule that I have is I don't deal with advertising, which is very counterintuitive for somebody like me to say. But <laughs> I don't accept um any paid advertising to come in. Yeah. Right. Uh, there are a few brands that have come in. Um, a certain cinema chain has been very supportive. Uh, they have a what they call a love and pride festival. Okay. So every time they have that, they have free ticket giveaways, which I will give away to the readers. Wow. So basically, anybody who wants to reach out to the community has to have something to give the readers, not to me. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um and there have been a couple. Uh I think even there was this uh, resort in Bali that had a wedding package for couples that had a very good discount. So I was like, mm, okay, uh, like fair enough and I conducted a little mini contest and a couple actually won a free stay, but they have to pay for their own tickets, lah. Right. Uh, they are their their own affair to go there. Very uh, nice. Yeah. But are you able gen- to say which cinema chain has been supportive uh, or are they are they themselves anonymous about it? Well, actually, I guess they're not anonymous because it's quite widely publicized on my page. Uh, okay. it's, it's actually Golden Village. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Uh, very cool folks there. Um, GVS. Golden okay. Village, Singapore. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, the other GVS. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you change yeah. the name though? Um, okay, so when I first started, right, again, Gay Confessions, like Singapore, yeah. uh, was kind of in line with the kind of content that I earlier mentioned, you know, the very gossip girl kind of stuff. Right. But when the actual content started coming in and almost three years later the same kind of content coming out stories half out stories right. stories about pain and, 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 and stuff like that or even stories about couples that are celebrating their love how they met and stuff like that mm-hmm. um, Confessions kind of trivialised that and, true, and, true. and it always kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable that I wasn't paying due justice to the kind of content that people were putting in Right. so when, face- when Facebook finally allowed my petition to go through and said okay we'll allow you a name change I decided to right. change it to like voices instead of confessions ah okay yeah. makes sense and GLBT again because okay so when I first started the page right being a total guy about it I didn't really think it through I just went with gay confessions actually so almost a month later, the girls came to me. They were very angry. And of they were course, like, what course. about us girls? You know? Yes. And then I was like, you oh, okay. Tran- the transgender community as yep. well. So uh, particularly for the girls, um, whom now we are quite close friends. Uh, so, right, hi, dude. Okay, sorry, I shall not out you here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so when they came to me and they asked me like, how was I doing what I was doing? So I basically showed them, you know, the, the, the Google Docs how I set it up and, and how to run the page and how to set the page and everything. And okay, I, cool. So I transferred all the knowledge to them and then they took it and then they ran. Yeah. So cool. now there's Lesbians SG Confessions. Nice. And, and, and then there's us. Yeah, but... Well, so I've changed the name now to be slightly more inclusive, but taking into account that the, the girls still have their own page. Right. So I swapped L and G in front. Right. Yeah. I mean, I looked it up. I actually looked it up online. Yeah. Uh, it's it's both ways are acceptable. I mean, yeah. of course, LGBT is more more common, yeah. but GLBT is also acceptable. Yeah. 
Yeah. So interesting. Uh, okay, so yeah. you so the Google anyone I mean, but basically, if any techie wants to know how to set up a, a Google Doc anonymous thing, I yeah. mean, they, it's the information's out there, right? You yeah. can do that for yeah. submissions or whatever. I was again a little bit more fortunate because in my professional life, uh, we were actually all on a Google platform. So I was already quite conversant with how to create forms and, and stuff like that. Right. So I merely applied that. But I didn't start off the forms first for the first three days. Uh, so the number of entries that I got in the first three days was actually quite dry. Until course, a I mean, reader... Because they need a, a way to be anonymous. Correct. And the forms are yep. the, uh, yep. one of those ways correct. that offers that. Okay. Yep. So it was a reader that actually wrote in and said, that, hey, you may want to consider using uh, Google Docs form. Now we're like, oh yeah, good point. Nice. When, I start, when, when I launched the form, it exploded. It right. really exploded. Okay, and speaking of Google, I mean, Google is a big supporter of Pink yeah. Dot, which is an annual uh, LGBT event uh, yeah. in Singapore, uh, where people gather at Hong Lim Park to form a Pink Dot, which is uh, taken, uh, uh, there's a picture taken of it from yeah. just to... Furama Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Furama Hotel. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, how many of your users of your uh, users do you know uh, attend Pink Dot? Because it, they're not... Very little. Very few. So there's actually a, another whole community that could Very add to the Pink Dot. But, but you say you respect the anonym, uh, anonymity. Right. Um, but at the same time, there's another debate of like, if you don't come out, then mm-hmm. how, how are we going to, you know, teach people right. or to, to, you know, show people that gay people are in families, right. are in just in jobs, uh, you know, in, in, in schools and everywhere in the army. Sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's this whole debate. W- okay. What is your stand on it? Um, well, I... I kind of understand both sides of the aisle, right? But the one thing that is uh, very top of mind for me uh, when somebody wants to come out, right, is firstly dealing with the consequences, uh, right? So in the states, for example, uh, when when somebody comes out and gets like disenfranchised, mm-hmm. uh, which means that you are thrown out of your home and stuff like that, and you don't have a place to stay, uh, there are shelters, but right. we don't have that kind of support system here in uh-huh. Singapore. So the consequences for somebody coming out here in Singapore, right, mm-hmm. aside from not having a place to sleep for the night to your employer finding out uh, we don't have any anti- anti-discrimination laws when it comes to being LGBT right. there's, there's no workplace um, workplace protection and stuff like that the consequences of coming out here in Singapore if negative are pretty dire okay right. so if you do want to come out I do advise a lot of readers and, and a lot of readers are actually surprised to hear this coming from me I, I usually tell them wait right wait for the best time make sure you're financially uh, independent right. make sure you do have a place to stay right. uh, I've, I've actually dealt with a couple of readers before who came to me very very distraught very very overwrought because they came out and everything just went south it just went so bad and they right. need a place to stay so uh, I've either put them in touch with, uh, with other readers who have got a spare room right. or I've even put up a couple of readers myself that's very very nice and, and very yeah. sweet of you. So, uh, and Let's then have you come back to the you're falling sure. you're falling east right. a little okay. bit, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, so with all that in mind, right? Um, yes, if the community does come out and we are a lot more visible, and hopefully it would help the government realize that there are a huge social strata of people who are living under discrimination, under fear, under stigma, then probably they, that will help change our mind a little bit. But okay. then again, with no proper social support system. Uh, that's a very personal decision, right. right? Do you do you sit down with the gov- uh, some of these uh, government bodies? I can't or talk about people? that. You can't talk about that. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I do, I do. Um, do you work with uh, the organizers of Pink Dot? Uh, like Perrin Chua um, is one of those yep. such ambassadors. Yep. Uh, my friend as well. Yep. Uh, do you? Oh, so you, you do? Yeah. Um, okay. Not not as officially as Pink Dot, I would say, uh, because I think Pink Dot now is a proper organization, right? right? That that has got on ground data on ground visibility and says that we've got this amount of people right um, not that I want to disparage our government in any way but they tend to take online presence a little bit less seriously so even yeah. when I go it's to still them still a new ground yeah, I mean even an, an yeah. advertising style, but people are starting to see the potential of yeah. it I mean you have these big stars and everything like I don't know have you heard of Tyler Oakley yeah, uh, yeah like all these you know met him at YouTube FanFest you did oh awesome, nice awesome fan. yeah He's got 7 million viewers. Scary. And for a young kid who has come out, yeah. you would think that he would be very unpopular because like, mm-hmm. you know, gay people, mm-hmm. you know, there's still there's still a lot of, uh, you get yep. hate, like Lawrence Kong, you know, like yep. for example. Um, so that's really encouraging to see. But I mean, also we, we must understand that the online community are also a younger people, right? Yeah, so pretty much. And so you don't get as much of that traditional sort of response from the older folk that m- tend, tend to be more against it than than anyone, right? No? I don't know. Um, 
Okay, firstly, I mean, like, Tyler Oakley comes from US, right? And yeah. things there have pretty much opened up in the last five years, if not the last ten years, right? If you look in terms of their media, in terms of the TV shows they have, you know, TV shows like Glee, where gay characters are not just a side act, right. but actually core central characters. It's, but it's very different when you have it here in Singapore. Um, what like one of the things that I know some of the community organisations are engaging with the government is about releasing or actually easing up the censorship laws on positive portrayals of LGBT individuals in in Singapore. Right. So anything that goes out in terms of cinema, TV, radio has to be... Well, I don't like to use the word, but it's pretty much censored. Right. right? Anything that's a positive portrayal. Okay. If you happen to show an LGBT character who is depressive, suicidal... Um, thrown out from family and all the other negative consequences that you know l- l- yeah that's fine but if you show a happy gay couple who's well adjusted <laughs> professional educated with proper jobs with a warm loving family no you can't show that yep and I remember watching Malrose plays back in the day and the yep. gay characters bits were always cut off I mean not yep. his bits but <laughs> the bits of him being on screen yep. Was, yep. were cut off yep. uh, I wonder if that happened to Buffy because Buffy Technically, it's actually the first series. I don't know if you know this that featured a really? uh, lesbian couple. No, I ever, no idea. ever on TV. Buffy was okay. the first series, so I don't know. I mean, if they Ooh. cut that out, uh, yeah. And I watched Brothers and Sisters as well. I don't know if you know. There's a, a happy. Well, they went through you know troubles and things like that, right. but they, they were happy moments as well. And so that also was started to starting to get cut out. So yeah, yeah. the the media and still censorship and it's it's sad. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, even as recently as I think sometime last year. Uh, some Taiwanese pop star was supposed to perform here and they told her that she couldn't perform a song because it was LGBT friendly. In fact, there were two. Right. One, one I think was like Jolene Tai and the other one was uh, uh, Ame. Right. Yeah. And wow. They, and oh yeah, Ame had this song, right? Yeah, and then Rainbow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's a little bit disturbing still. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of all this, uh, so, again, in the US, because there have been a lot of positive, a lot of uplifting portrayals of LGBT individuals, right. you you create the space and you create that kind of open mindset for people like Tyler Oakley to flourish. In Singapore, you can't do that. Do we yeah. have a Ty- Tyler Oakley here, you think? No, not yet. Would I, you be that Tyler Oakley? <laughs> well, I wish I can sing, so... Oh, he but, sings as well. Okay, I don't follow him. I should start subscribing. Actually, him. I do. Um, but no, you, you actually, s- I don't. But does he sing? I don't know. You said you wish you could sing. But well, I always thought that he's saying. Oh, I, I don't know. Okay. But speaking of which, this is just a bit of lighthearted news. And Nick used to sing, and you still do, I'm sure, no, in the shower no, or something. No. Uh, we actually met doing my first musical ever called Yes, Bring Out the Mug, Beauty World. This is the yeah. the ninety. This is the two thousand eight version. But the oh, okay. but the but we did meet in the nineteen ninety eight version. Yep. Um, uh, and uh. Ha ha ha, he doesn't sing. Who's that? Do we know? Do we I know Hens? No oh, no, 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 He's talking about Choice Event, not Tyler. Oh, but. Tyler. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Um, and uh, we and then we did another I, musical together. Hello, Hens. Uh, called Forbidden City. Yeah, that was 2001. So, so Nick has a musical theatre history for our musical theatre uh, theater fans who are watching, wondering, why, why is Nick on here? But no, Nick, I mean, aside from the fact that I do want to talk about this, uh, Nick does have a musical theatre history. Uh, yeah, so do you do much of that now? Do you miss it? Uh, miss it, yes. Like, when I catch you performing, for example. It does get to be a little bit, like... <coughs> oh, Sorry, I'm choking now because <laughs> I just choked, basically, yeah. for no reason. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, well, I've moved on, right? right. And I, I always felt that, like, my talent probably wouldn't bring me as far. So, yeah. Oh, don't say that. No, I am Guys, very... Guys, if you search I Beauty World for online for the 98 version, uh, I think the one with Sharon Allen as Lulu uh, and Jacinta, you will find... You will find Nick. Are you sure? Yep. Dancing. It's online, it's online on YouTube. Type Beauty World 1998. You will see Nick as a chorus member dancing around. Are you sure? Yes. Oh yes. My God. <laughs> okay. I um, did come across the Forbidden City one. Yeah. But it had nothing to do with like, me dancing. It had, And it was a very specific scene. It was me as a eunuch. I don't know whether you remember, but in Forbidden City, right. I was mostly one of the Chinese warriors. Yeah, of course dancer, I right? remember. I was in but it. But there was only one scene that I got to be a eunuch, and I really played it up. Yeah. <laughs> played it up meaning? I was very campy. <laughs> yeah, I suspected. <laughs> and, and, and that is the only scene that is captured online, which I went like, oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so speaking of which, let's turn our attention to the users. Uh, there's just some activity there. So by the way, guys, if you want to ask anything, now is your chance to ask. Oh, um, that's actually one of my readers. Hi, okay. Kendall. 
Uh, what's his name? The Kaito. Kaito. Yeah. All right. He says Tyler sings quite well actually. Just that it's not the main thing on his channel. Okay, I have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, Duat says hi also. Hello, Duat. Hey. You've uh oh so you switched to your other account. Uh anyway uh I was gonna say what was I gonna say I completely forgot now. Uh never mind let's move on. Oh yes I it feels like we're gonna be talking for quite a bit. Sure. So. Our episode usually ends after an hour, so basically we will wrap up there. But right. I feel like if you're uh, okay to stay on, we're sure. gonna record the second half of this interview, and this will be the season finale, right? For for Dwayne Spin Stop. Uh, so be sure to check that out. I'm sure I'll put the link down uh, once that's ready. Um, but Hi. yes, feel free to ask questions if you uh, want to. Um, another thing so what do you feel about the hate that's been happening you're talking about haters that that that, that you don't you know mm. that write to you as well right. but then you, you do get that from outside as well I mean or even people not related to the page like people like Lawrence Kong um, um, uh, did Amos E for at, at one point uh, well, okay <laughs> for Amos E wasn't so much a hate it was more of okay. he had he hates me I know <laughs> uh, he had points of contention yeah, he okay. uh, with with how, but uh, but with Amos, it's very n- unpersonal in a sense, right? Right. Uh, so yeah, not the kind of hate. Um, okay, but with Lawrence, I do get a lot of religiously based hate, which I kind okay. of understand. And after a while, when when you read through the comments, it's always the same thing, quoting the same Bible scripture verses. And, right. And, okay, fine. Um, a lot of it, and I don't mind saying this, um, because I don't think the haters will watch this, but a lot of it is really very mindless. A lot of it is really very stupid. Um, right. Even if they're well watching research. it, it's good for them to know what you think. Yeah, but okay, the thing about their mindset <laughs> is, I don't stupid. think they, they, they are open to criticism or they are open to hearing opposing points of view. Right. right? Um, okay, which then you can throw back to me, right? Why am I not taking their points of view into consideration? Um, a lot of it is actually very groundless to me. Um, how should I put this without sounding like a total jackass? Uh, okay, <laughs> personally okay, for me, opinion, okay, right? I am agnostic when it comes to religion. Uh, right. I've, I've had a Roman Catholic upbringing and, and stuff like that, but uh, not to trivialize people who have chosen spir- um, spirituality, it, but for me, um, I just don't find my needs in religion. So I've right. kind of grown out of religion because of that. But I have to say, spirituality is yeah. to me different from religion. Um, spirituality yep. is just I'm yep. spiritual but I, I'm not necessarily re- religious anymore yep. uh, yeah religion is more it's a, more of Believing a construct in, in, and in, in, there's a very that, set yeah correct in, in that whole set of beliefs and, 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 and stuff like that right yeah um, I've met a lot of enlightened religious people right. who are able to update their beliefs with how, so, with how society has progressed right, right. so here's a shout out for um, FCC which is the free community church uh, I have been out to their premises and, and the church is being led by Pastor Miyak Siu. Right. Uh, again, because of my upbringing in Christianity, I can relate to a lot of what he's preaching and sharing and stuff like that. It's he's good. somebody that I really admire. Um, another person would be like Reverend Yap, mm-hmm. who's I think like 70 plus if not 80. And he, he he's actually, I mean, he's one of the most respected pastors here. And right. he's actually very welcoming and very affirming of the LGBT community. Right. right. So when you look at religious uh, leaders like that, or even Pope Francis now, right? right yes. Who's one of the most progressive popes in the last fifty years, definitely. If if, if 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 not the last century, right? He's able to update his beliefs in with how society has progressed, and then you look at the other spectrum whereby these people are actually regressing back into the Stone Age, and they start espousing things from the Old Testament, which to me is like, come on, the Old Testament, seriously. Jesus has not had a single negative thing to say about gay people. Nothing. But right. he's spoken about stuff like divorce. Yeah. Which, again, these people don't seem to speak much up about. Right. I mean, I mean stuff like that. to me, yeah. the concept of God is, is love, right? He loves yeah. everyone. So, yeah. I mean, he may not endorse the act of it, but, I mean, I think whatever it is, the basis is that if you're religious, I believe that there should be love and not hate, uh, you know, and not fear sort of spreading and all that. Um, Okay, uh, so yeah, yeah so basically, <laughs> all right, I don't know if you want to mention that, uh, but anyhow, so let's move on to we have about 15 minutes left. Wow, time, uh, flies. time really flies. Um, uh, okay, so the rest of it we'll cover in the next uh, episode wrap, but for sure. now, let's move on to let's see, how about uh, gay apps? 
like grinder and, and netiquette okay. and things like that. Since since it's related, of course, it's, it's it's all social media, right? right. In a sense, um, what do you feel about those things? Like for example, um, people's agenda on these things. I mean, it's okay to to look for a good time, but I feel like um, there can be instances where people just ask like cockpit, please. Yeah. Um. You know. Uh, is that is that, like, would you feel that just because it's a gay app that is seen it's as okay it's uh, there are some people who are you know looking for a certain type of thing right. doesn't doesn't mean that everybody is there to, to okay so what um <laughs> as a personal social experiment right right I I actually created a Tinder profile okay. that was heterosexual right. Okay? So firstly, I just want to clarify. I'm yeah, totally and the comparison gay. between that and yeah. the no, actually, um. So amongst the straight people, right? Right. They are pretty much transactional in, in, in terms of their engagement with the apps. By transactional I mean things like it's very much cut to the chase, very direct, I'm here for sex and that's it. Even so, with the girls. Even with the girls. So right. I've had girls who, you know, you swipe left, swipe swipe right to indicate <laughs> your interest and everything, right, right? right? And they straight away go I've had girls ask me straight away, like, what's the size of a dick? How big is wow. it? Wow! Is it uncut? Okay. Do you do unprotected Obviously, sex? Obviously, don't have Send that experience. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I tried that for a day. It was quite amusing for me, right? Right. Uh, and girls themselves can be pretty wild. Yeah. Okay. I was so, just going to so, say, so, I thought so men had, were the hornier no, beings and the they, no. two men together, of course, you know, yeah. you would... Okay. Um, that, that, that stemmed out from a conversation that, that I was having with friends, right? Because pretty much the same point that you had. Uh, is it only the gay community that's like, no, so, no. Even the straight boys and girls are doing it too. All right, but in uh, terms of boundaries, do you feel that that something that is of uh, con- you know something that should be improved or discussed or you know like I mean because it, it, like or is there a way to make it better or do you think it's okay that it's just um, just a market for whatever goes? I mean, I f- I find it a bit uh, violating in a sense because I mean, even <laughs> if you go to say a gay bar for example, right. the the fact that men think that they can just reach out. Right. I mean, some people are okay with it, which is fine, but then. But then, just because I'm at a gay bar, doesn't mean yep. that that my crotch is is, is 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 for for everybody to touch, you know, or for anyone to touch. So, um, in the same way, on the gay, I feel like it's a bit disrespectful in terms of right. being human for to just go, uh, where are you? Or you know, it's like I wh- what what about me has given you the idea that I want you to know where I stay. The first right. thing, right? right? It's a bit like what what what. Uh, what, what, okay. The mentality. Where does this come from, and what? What? And do you think it's okay? Um, okay, I feel that people adopt different personas, uh, okay. with different platforms, right? right? So they n- not yeah. necessarily be like that in. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. The one thing about your your dating apps, okay, and I'm addressing this to all dating apps, right? Okay. Uh, it's as personal as it can get because it appears on on your mobile, right? Right. Um. Again, this makes me sound a bit of a dinosaur. But <laughs> back when I first came out, right, sharing your phone number with somebody was as personal as you can get. I right. don't know whether you remember that. Even as friends, right? Do, yeah, do oh, share, it is. Right? It is. So, um, that, that, that kind of personal boundaries... Your kind pager of, number. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 pager number. Uh, so, those kind of personal boundaries kind of fall down when you are engaging with somebody on an app that's expressly for hooking up. And a lot of them are very direct, you know? Right, so that's... So, stuff like where they ask you, like where, you, like, where you stay. It's not so much of wanting to know where you stay. No, as, of course, they as, just want to know how... As opposed to how far you are... So that I can have sex of, with you soon. Yeah. Right, yeah. No, so, 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 well, basically, yes. I guess if you look at yeah. it that way, then it's yeah. acceptable in a uh, sense. I'm not saying that, that the lack of manners is a right thing. Right. But um, it's just that when people are horny, they really want to get to it. Yeah, I right? guess so. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Because you don't see a lot of people doing that on Facebook. No, right? of course not. Right? Uh, face- okay, before Facebook, there was Friendster. Right. So Friendster became that de facto kind of want to hook up with somebody but still try to have a relationship kind of a thing. Right. right? But there were people who would try to use Friendster to get hookups yeah. and would get slammed big time. Right. right. And then when it moved onto Facebook and then Facebook itself set the tone <laughs> by saying that you can only add friends that you know. You're don't not forget MySpace to- in between. There but was yeah. MySpace? MySpace Here? in Singapore. Yeah, I use MySpace. I don't really? know. Really? Anyway, but okay. Yeah. So 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 with Facebook, right? That has come of like kind of become the very proper social way of getting to know people online now, right? right. But then you have Grinder, which is the other, which is the total opposite. With Facebook, you put up pictures of your friends, your face, and everything is all up there. Your entire life is on Facebook. Right. With Grinder, it's usually like a bot pic, whereby it's like here. Yeah. And then it's all about sex. Right? Bronze. So and sex. 
so it's like I think people's mentality kind of shifts like when I'm on grinder, it's okay to be rude it's good or or rather it's okay to be direct right. it, it's okay to just talk about cocks and balls and right. stuff for which okay. I'm sorry but right yeah. fine but then the other thing okay, you can read those if you want to the other thing is um now that now that all these things are happening like people are sending their their nudies all across right. across all of that internet uh, freeway um they have, I've seen like some other sites pop out like Tumblr sites where they there's like <laughs> Singapore men nude yeah and so all I your actually nudies, know some of the admins for that you, you do okay yeah I do so they started it to promote that uh, uh, what do you think about that though and it's 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 for for those people who are well, obviously, it's a, would you th- do you think it's a violation of privacy? I mean, if you send your nudes, yep. is that is that basically you're sending out to the world? Or yep. do you still consider it as if you send your nudes to someone, that person is still responsible for being respectful about your nudes? Or do you think it's a free market? Um, okay, firstly, all right, being very practical here, if you send your nudes to somebody, be prepared to lose it. Right. And I am speaking from personal experience, which I probably shouldn't state that here, but my nudes are out there online as well. I have seen them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So my news are all there, right? Um, and a lot of my friends have gotten very upset. But to me, it's like, come on, you know, I should have known better, right? Yeah. I've taken a very sanguine and very zen approach to it. See my news, see my news, law. You know, yeah. Right. Right. Um, but if you don't want it out there, don't share it with anybody at all, right? Yeah. Which is why I think Snapchat is so popular because Snapchat is supposed to auto delete your picture because of right. That. But then there are apps where you can sort of still download yeah. it and stuff yeah. like that. So, so people, so people will always get around it, right? Yeah. So first, the first rule of being online, right? If you don't want it out there, don't put it out there. Yeah. Right? This this not not only applies to new, um, to anything, your new pictures, any, but, any but thoughts, anything, right? Or whatever. Um. Secondly, yes. Okay. In terms of common decency, human decency, yes. You know, the person whom you sent it to should feel that pers- that sense of personal responsibility. Right. Um. I have amplified it a lot. I mean, I don't want to flog my page again. But again, people who send in their stuff to me, I take their their rights of like privacy very very seriously right. I've had other readers who message me and say that I really want to get in touch with this reader because I love what he wrote or I'm very disturbed by what right. he wrote or I, or I really want to but to me so long as a person has not expressed the wish to be right. contacted I will never share right that's it well it's that's their choice and they can still log on the page and still comment on the yeah. and still but to a lot of them, them won't do that because it breaches that whole anonymous thing right, right. because okay. they, they don't want to interact with the page that way interesting um, and, and then some of these notes also get sold I don't know I'm sure their websites yes. which, which is another yep. horrible thing yep. which um, you have people actually profiting off nudes yeah they do that and then which I is, don't even know but then there are other sites which um, which which take them down which mm. also profit even though they're doing a good thing but I feel like they're also profiting from from you know like well, what can be done right uh some were oh yeah that is true what is that some uh, sen- yeah so 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 some of these news that were sent into the tumblr pages right and again i know a few of these like tumblr admins oh they themselves want to feature that their own yeah news. because they want to okay that's fine yeah that's fine then no but, all right so that's fine but so, so. uh i think one thing which all the tumblr admins do adhere to is if you if you see your picture there and you're not comfortable with it get them to take it down. Right. But the problem about Tumblr is once it starts being shared, you can't control it anymore. It's kind of become a whole Yeah, beast. it does. It gets... There are yep. other sites that leech onto Tumblr, sites yep. that have a, like a duplicate sort of a site as yep. well, right? Um, even with YouTube, there are other sites which download all the YouTube videos and have their own sort of... Really? I think so, yeah. They oh. just like... They have another YouTube. So, so that I think it seems like what we are talking about is actually more in terms of piracy. It is piracy. It's a t- right? thing to do with piracy because it's copyright. Your pictures are your... Uh, yeah. your copyright you know your it's so interesting I don't know if we can delve into that in the, in the next episode uh, right. but right now we're running out of time so sure. I wanted to get through to this um, there's this confession uh, by my friend I'm so afraid I'll, I'll say his name but it's 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 lengthy but uh, if you could read it he would be very very happy so it starts from here and right up to the end so you can if you want to read it this way would it help uh, yeah I'm actually trying to see whether I recall this confession or not. Okay. Well, read it and see if you... Hmm. Okay. Um, Alright, so it starts with, um, like, my man. I went back to Sentosa. I took off my slippers, walked to the shore of, of Siloso Beach, and watched the ships riding the waves in the distance. In the moonlight, they looked like they were not moving. If only time could stand as still. It's amazing how much the island has changed since our first date. There was no monorail, no mega resort, and hardly any clubs on the beaches. One of my fondest memories is holding a hand, walking barefoot along the shore of Siloso Beach one night, the cool seawater coming up to our feet. 
I remember thinking I could not be happier. We were only 18, but I was right. I went back to the botanic gardens too. It hasn't changed much from that drizzly night in January. We stopped in the middle of a misty road shrouded in thick foliage. Quite a writer, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Illuminated by a single lamppost. There, in the shadows, we kissed for the first time. I closed my eyes, not quite believing the feeling of your lips against mine. It was the most magical moment of my life. You came home with me that night. I was so afraid that someone would find out. We tiptoed into my room in darkness, <laughs> lit a candle and sat on my beach. I'm starting to recall this. Sat on my bed? Beach or... Oh, no, no. Sat on my bed. Oh, okay. All right. uh, I'll always treasure that image of two awkward teenage boys not quite knowing what to do, or how things were supposed to unfold. We treated each other as if we were fragile. I remember thinking how beautiful your eyes were when you caressed my face. Everything was new to me. The, str- the touch of your strong hands, the smell of your cologne, your stubble against my neck. An embrace so tight that nothing but time could tear asunder. Your hair still damp with rain as I ran my fingers through it. The thrill of something real and clandestine. The feeling of two boys on a single bed. When I see young lovers going through their own rites of passage now, I think about our time together and feel grateful that I shared it with you. I would never again experience those feelings. The excitement as the weekend drew near because I could see you again. The bittersweet goodbyes at the MRT station every Sunday. The sheer joy of opening my mailbox in the middle of the week and finding an envelope bearing your small, childlike handwriting. I finally understand the Pablo Neruda sonnet you wrote to me one Valentine's Day. Sonnet, oh god, this is Roman numerals. 17. <laughs> I failed to realise it back then. We were dark things, you and I, and that was what made our relationship so beautiful. Too many years have passed since we parted ways, but you still live on in my heart. As yet another year goes by, I give thanks for everything you have done for me. I miss you very much. Love me. Aww. You remember, I remember this? this? I think I remember this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for reading that. I'm sure right. he's very. I'm sure he'd be very happy. He's tuning in right now. I, I believe. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So thank you for that. Okay, but on that note, uh, so this is yeah, this is the kind of stuff that you get, right? It's very sweet. I mean, this is actually yep. the first time I've saved it. I've not actually read it when he sent it to me, and this is the first time I'm actually hearing it. And it's it's very sweet. It'll be very nice to. I can imagine right. as you read these things. Some, I mean, whatever, whatever <sighs> stories they are, they're quite moving. I'm sure. Actually, uh, the ones that gets to me are those that talk about the parent relationships. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think, again, I've had, I've been blessed to have a wonderful relationship with my mom. Right? And my mom was totally accepting. So when I read about somebody whose parent has, you know, not not opened up to, right. to accepting them, that really cuts to me. Because it firstly reminds me of how lucky I was and how much I wish that everybody could have had that kind of relationship I've had with my parents. Right. Just like, so you're gay. So, yeah. So if there are any parents out there or parents to be, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do that for your kids. For yourselves as well. Um, okay, so to wrap up, remember we're going to probably have another episode because there's still more to talk about. Uh, I am going to do some shameless publicity. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. I know you said no advertising, but this is my own channel. No, no, no. This is the only time I'll get right. to advertise this. I just found out that he wrote the book today. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know that. I've been so quiet about it. It's been actually a while. Um, so it's called... Uh, my cup of teo. Uh, it's about a Singaporean boy's search for home in America, and part of his search for home is his identity. Also, he so he's dealing with uh, his uh, um, homosexuality basically, and it's uh, about him being in New York searching for it. Because I mean, he's from Singapore, but it's sort of a little bit like my story, except that I wish my life were that exciting. But um, a lot of the places uh, and events and things are accurate, but a lot of the situations are a bit. Um, to hotter than what I've experienced in real life. Right. But anyhow, so these both I would like to give to you. Thank you. Um, you can choose if you want. Right. To I'm definitely going to give one copy out. One copy out yeah. to the reader. So I don't know how that's going to happen, but right. you know, go to GVS, find out. Right. Uh, but if you don't get a chance to get that, which because only one person will, uh, you might want to check the video description uh, in my YouTube link. Right. So if you're watching this on Facebook, you have to click into the disc- the the video to go to the YouTube uh, link. I'm gonna put uh, it's on uh, iTunes as well, and it's also on Lulu.com, which uh, you can get the PDF or the physical edition. But it's better to get the PDF because the physical edition costs as much as the book to ship to Singapore. So get the PDF. Much recommended. Can I just ask mm-hmm. why are there two sizes? Is this a more travel friendly? One is for old people. 
Uh, old people, this one. Really? Because okay. the text is bigger and this one is for... <laughs> no, it's just because there's there's always paperback and there's always... Uh, I mean, there's always trade and paperback, right? right? Oh, so, okay, okay. So right, there right. are two sizes. Oh, okay. That's why. It's been very long since I've held a physical book. Right? <laughs> really? Because everything is like all on my iPad now. Right. I've got like over 4,000 books here. Wow. And comics. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, me too, but I, I still like to hold my... I, yeah, I s- Some of my books now that I haven't read that I'm reading, I, I actually download them on PDF as well, so I can flip between the books if I want to. But, you know, speaking of which, just a random uh, thing, um, we... A lot of YouTubers now, they... Because it's, everything's so, so, so online and digital, when they release merchandise, they actually re- release tangible things. So their books are not PDFs, because cool. I think fans want to hold something. Yep. Yeah, we didn't even get time to play games, so we'll play games in the next episode. Uh, so be sure to catch that. I don't know when, but uh, we're gonna wrap up. What is for a moment? Mm-hmm. I thought one. Yeah, this is the old people version. Oh, why? Because that's what you said. Oh, this it is what. So yeah. why would? No, no nothing. <laughs> Just okay. responding to the comments. Right, right. Okay. And this is come for those who view live. Very good. Very Singaporean. You definitely have to be Singaporean. Uh, any discount? Uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I mean, the price is on the website. I can't really change it. Uh, what I can do is, if you are Singaporean, maybe I can meet you and sign it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I think I'm going to get you to sign it. Okay. And oh, then so you're going to keep the... the yeah. you're, you're young, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then at my next coffee session, I may actually give this up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, I don't know, so maybe if you purchase a copy, I can turn up there and sign it. I don't know, no, 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 maybe not, maybe not. I don't know, it's a bit awkward. Um, anyhow, so we got to wrap up, so be sure. sure to catch the second episode. Uh, uh, yeah, and we're going to have to say goodbye. I always get my guests to click on stop streaming. Sure. Uh, so if you could do that, and then we'll continue recording the second episode. All right, thank you. See you. Take care, bye.